common symptom of the oral cavity is pain, sore throat, burning in the mouth. Painful swallowing is called odynophagia. So any disease in the oral cavity, uh, ca uh, the patient will come with these complaints. The main complaint is pain and sore throat. Occasionally, they come with painful swallowing. And burning is another symptom which is quite common. Uh, and there are various causes of it. So what are the various uh, patho uh, pathologies or which can present with these symptoms? Sometimes they present with, uh, apart from the pain, uh, they may say that they have noticed a gland or swelling in the neck. Okay. Next. And occasionally they come with a history of pain in the uh, ear, which is called otalgia. You examine the ear, it is absolutely normal. But when you take a detailed history, they make a complaint of uh, uh, pain in the teeth or toothache or sore throat. And you look in the oral cavity, you may find an ulcer or inflammation, which is causing the referred pain to the ear. So these are the common symptoms with which the patient presents. Now, what is the etiology? Like any etiology, you should know that whenever we ask etiology, you divide them congenital acquired. In acquired, it is trauma, inflammation, autoimmune neoplasm. So trauma, what are the various things which can cause trauma in the mouth? So you all know that whenever you are eat, eating any warm food, it burns your mouth. It burns your mouth. So it could be a chemical burns or physical trauma, foreign bodies. Uh, in adults, the commonest foreign body in oral cavity or oropharynx is fish bone, uh, which most common site of fish bone is the base of the tongue. And the second common side is the tonsil and various ulcers and various inflammatory problems. So inflammation can be generalized inflammation of the mouth, which is called stomatitis, or it may be restricted to one area of the mouth, say tongue, which is called glossitis or tonsillitis or posterior wall of the pharynx, pharyngitis. Now, a lot of times patients come with complaint of sore throat. Uh, they find it difficult to swallow and they think it is a tonsillitis, but if you look carefully, the tonsil will look normal, but posterior wall of the pharynx is hyperemic or severely uh, inflammatory changes are seen. And most common cause of pharyngitis is not the throat, but it is secondary to rhinosinusitis or rhinitis. You may have noticed whenever you have got, get a cold, you also get a sore throat because of the mucus dripping down at the back of your throat and cause inflammation. Pharyngitis is most commonly secondary to nasal problem. I hope I'm not going too fast. And other inflammatory condition you can see are the white patch uh, or red patch. White patches where you can have a thrush, which is a fungus, or leukoplakia, or erythroplakia. Uh, I'm sure you know that leukoplakia and erythroplakia are three malignant conditions. We will discuss in the next lecture. And then the neoplasm. So these are the common etiologies or conditions which can cause uh, pain in the mouth or sore throat. Uh, the, among, all, among the whole list, I think commonly we see the tonsillitis or pharyngitis and sometimes generalized inflammation of the mouth or the ulcers. A lot of people come with uh, history of recurrent ulcers. Okay, next slide. So there are some miscellaneous causes. So just, uh, we'll move to the next slide. Uh, now, these are various pictures. It shows chemical burn. Uh, some people try to commit suicide and they drink bleach or other chemicals. All right. And uh, trauma abrasion from the teeth. Now, I'll have to pause from here. Uh, pause here for a, a minute or two. This is a lot of people get to take and sharp projecting teeth can cause ulceration near the teeth. And they go to the dentist and get dental extraction. Now, in our society, oral cancer is very common. We see so much oral cancer, especially in, in Karachi and Sindh. So beware, whenever you see an ulcer near the teeth, it could be malignant. I'm not saying that all ulcers near the teeth are malignant, but remember, if somebody has got a toothache and there's an ulcer close to the toothache, close to the teeth, it could be malignant ulcer. So you have to bear in that mind. Okay. Ill-fitting dentures, uh, if you have got grannies at your home, sometimes they will complain of pain in the mouth, they are wearing dentures. 
and you remove the denture, you will see, them. you may see this picture, inflammation of the gums and palate. This picture nicely shows the fish bone stuck in the tonsil, which I discussed. So let's talk about inflammatory condition of the oral cavity. We have talked about trauma, foreign body. As I said, generalized inflammation of the oral cavity is called stomatitis, which is quite often patient present with or limited to the tongue, which is glossitis, or ulcers, thrush, or tonsillitis, or pharyngitis. Wilson and Joanna, we'll discuss later. These are rare conditions, but we sometimes see them. Okay, now what, what causes the inflammation of the oral cavity? The commonest cause of the inflammation of the oral cavity are nutritional deficiency. A lot of people complain of that they get recurrent pain in the mouth or ulcers, you look in the mouth, there may be generalized inflammation, there may be ulcers, and they may be, these are often due to the nutritional deficiency. And infection, the common infection is tonsillitis or pharyngitis, which can present with uh, a painful mouth or sore throat. Dehydration is another uh, uh, etiology which can cause generalized inflammation of the mouth, like stomatitis, and especially in elderly people who are living alone, uh, uh, and they're not uh, drinking enough fluids. Drugs. A lot of drugs can cause uh, ulceration in the mouth, especially antibiotics. When you are giving them antibiotic to the patients uh, for a prolonged period, all in antibiotics are not indicated. They come to me that they had some fever, which was probably viral. Some GP gave them antibiotic, and when I examined in their mouth, uh, it is not tonsillitis, but it is the mouth is full of multiple small ephthys ulcers. So this is one of the predis uh, predisposing factor causes of inflammation. We have talked about trauma. Immunodeficiency is rare cause of the inflammation of the mouth. Somebody who is on immunosuppressant drugs like chemotherapy or HIV, which fortunately is rare in our society, or diabetic. So these are the uh, common etiological factors. Factors. What you have to bear in mind whenever a patient comes to you with a painful mouth or sore throat, two or three things you should consider first. It could be generalized inflammation like stomatitis or glossitis or well ulcer. Or if patient is being of sore throat, it could be tonsillitis or pharyngitis. So remember these two few conditions. Now these are the various pictures I will show to you. As you can see ulceration, generalized redness of the lower lip and the floor of the mouth and ulceration. Uh, this is angular colitis. You may often develop it often it is due to the iron deficiency enemy. Now, there are various uh, harmless condition of the tongue, uh, which looks uh, alarming. Often patient comes and they say that I, my tongue is black or brown. This is due to the pathology in the papilla stop shedding. Filiform papilla, as you know, lies the, uh, lines the tongue and uh, they cause uh, these uh, changes which are covered with creatine and bacteria. Why do they get it? Uh, maybe because of poor, poor oral hygiene or they are taking some drugs which causes inflammation of the mouth or people who are heavy smoker or tea drinkers, they get this staining of the tongue. They are not painless, but people worry about it. them. So you have to reassure them. Examine it properly, do the palpation as you all know, and show that there's nothing uh, sinister going on. And you may take a swab if you want. Uh, but generalize, improve uh, diet, improve uh, hydration, improve oral hygiene, and uh, cessation of smoking or ex avoid excessive coffee or tea, then, and it will improve. So this is another picture, uh, which is called hairy tongue, uh, which I have just described. You can see the slip on papilla gets longer and looks like hair. People start brushing. Uh, their tongue. You should discourage them. They don't have to brush their tongue. Just mouthwashes and improve oral hygiene. Another condition called geographic tongue. Uh, the tongue looks uh, like a map. The various irregular patches. Now beware. Uh, you have to often malignant ulcers may present with, with these changes. So you have to palpation is important. In malignant ulcers, they will the edges will be very firm or or indurated. But in this, there are smooth patches, generalized uh, brown, white, yellowish patches. And again, the etiology is not known genetic or poor oral hygiene. So 
So uh, once you have done the proper examination and you know that it is uh, not something which uh, uh, can uh, like malignancy or some other uh, significant disease, so you can just advise them to improve the oral hygiene. And the treatment of, of sometimes we give is tropical steroid in more portions. This is a close-up picture of geography. Fisher tank special gum is the Again, this is harmless condition. Nobody knows why people get it. Again, generalized improvement or oral hygiene. No need to give any medicines, just mouthwashes, even not steroids. No need to give any topical steroid in these conditions. Often patients who come with generalized inflammation of the mouth, like stomatitis or aphthous, we give them topical steroid and severe cases. Severe uh, systemic steroid, but not uh, in this condition. This is another picture of fissuring, fissure of the tongue. These are very rare conditions. Now, ulcers are very common. It could be traumatic. No, I, I can see 90 students have joined. I hope you all are, my voice is loud and clear. Uh, Vakas, let me know if the voice gets, uh, uh, the voice is not clear. Okay. Right now it's uh, very clear. Okay, it's very difficult to give the lecture blindly looking at the computer screen, <laughs> not looking at the participants. Uh, is there any way of, uh, I can just watch the students sitting there on the, on the side screen? If it is possible, then uh, it would be great. Anyway, so ulcers again, uh, there are various kinds of ulcers. When a patient complains of ulcer and you examine it, they, often the patient comes and says, My boss has made a child. The whole oral cavity is clear as a bell or as a glass. Clear as a glass, not a, as a bell. These patients are psychotic. They family cancer. They are worried about it. But, but again, any, you do not put the cause psychosomatic unless you have done the proper examination. The common ulcer which are, we have discussed about traumatic, it could be inflammatory or new process. This is how you broadly classify uh, ulcers in the oral cavity. Okay, traumatic ulcers, again, I'm sh showing you the pictures which I, we have talked about. Uh, so you must palpate them. If it is smooth edges and they are not indurated soft, then it is most likely traumatic. But if it is indurated or firm, then it could be malignant. And as a general rule, any ulcer in the oral cavity which does not heal in four weeks must get a biopsy. So you have to, once they come to you, examine them. If you, you are uh, suspicious or strongly suspicious, advise them biopsy or wait for four weeks, give them topical steroid and severe cases, systemic steroid, and then review them. If it is not healing in four weeks, then you must and must do a biopsy. Remember that oral cancer is very common. Unfortunately, most of the people come very late. Okay, solitary aphthous ulcer. Uh, they, these are uh, often due to nutritional deficiency or sometimes use of antibiotic. A small ulcer, a smooth, soft, yellow base is surrounded by hyperemic uh, area around the ulcer. I hope you can see my cursor uh, uh, around this. Can they see my cursor around the presentation on the slide? Pass because I don't have a pointer. So this is after salsa. Bakas, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm yes. So what are you saying? Yes, sir. 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 Sometimes patient complain mujhe bahut pain ho raha you examine the oral cavity you don't see anything but if you do a careful examination recently i was looking at a patient i said ulcer nahi but when i moved his tongue posteriorly with my finger there was a tiny ulcer sitting at the floor of the mouth posteriorly and poor chap was, was right and complaining of pain so uh, the message is do a very good proper examination, inspection and palpation, move the tongue all around. We will show you in the clinics how to examine the mouth. So you, uh, you, you must examine it properly before labeling it psychosomatic, okay? So this is another picture in which you see multiple ulcers in the 
सॉफ्ट पैलेट एंड यू विल पेशेंट कम कि मुझे ट्रांसलाइटिस हो गया एंटीबायोटिक एंटीबायोटिक खाया जा रहा है एंटीबायोटिक विल मेक थिंग्स वर्स आई हैव ट्रीटेड दीस पेशेंट्स सो मेनी टाइम्स दे आर ऑन एंटीबायोटिक वेरियस एंटीबायोटिक बाय वेरियस डॉक्टर्स एंड इट इज नॉट गेटिंग वर्स यू स्टॉप द एंटीबायोटिक एंड गिव देम टॉपिकल स्टेरॉइड माउथ वॉश लाइक बेटा मेथाजोन टैबलेट्स बेटनिसोल टैबलेट और सिस्टमिक स्टेरॉइड प्रेडिसोलोन फॉर अ वीक एंड दे गेट you see remarkable improvement and in the next week time they come smiling and they are grateful to you and they are grateful to allah as well anyway herpes ulcers this is a viral infection these are rare often it is difficult to differentiate whether it is herpes or f the ulcer but a herpes ulcer are usually acute in origin and they last few days herpes ulcer uh, f the ulcer can also be acute or can also be recurrent uh so uh, in uh, uh, sometimes it is difficult to differentiate clinically even at my stage and as a student you will find it very difficult to differentiate between herpes ulcers or f the ulcer uh typically this one this may be f the ulcer this may be herpes ulcer so anyway you do the proper examination herpes are viral origin and may be associated with some changes in the lips uh, some ulceration of the lips or around the lip Uh, so the, treat them with a topical with a topical mouthwash and topical steroid malignant ulcer uh, uh, we will discuss in, in the next lecture but uh, as i said the ulcer edges you are uh, you have to palpate the edges they they are firm that is indurated okay this and another malignant ulcer okay acute inflammatory ulcers are abscess ulcer herpes ulcer beche syndrome in, uh, associated with some genital changes we don't have to go into detail uh, in this short lecture so as i said abscess ulcer are recurrent oval ulcer with erythema or redness around the skin around the floor and benign and very painful i have shown you the picture on the causes may be tumorpathic most commonly uh, they are because of vitamin deficiency when we i see the patient with aftas ulcer i give them topical steroid and vitamins and uh, improve their oral hygiene and improve their hydration plenty of water uh, because dehydration can also cause inflammation and they get better uh, iron deficiency of, and as i said any ulcer which does not heal in four four weeks you must do a biopsy but when the patient comes to you first time and it is acute in uh, his from the history it appears that it is acute so you examine properly and and correct the nutritional factors and topical steroid this is a general rule of treating uh, inflammation of the mouth that is stomatitis glossitis or def- different ulcers which uh, which are either acute or recurrent so initially you uh, improve the nutrition of the patient by giving them uh, proper uh, advice dietary advice improve the hydration give them some vitamin type, uh, b complex iron if there is deficiency of iron iron and uh, if they are on antibiotics stop the antibiotics and uh, in, uh, sometime we give them topical steroid and occasionally when uh, ulcers are very severe uh, and patient is in very uh, is in a lot of pain so we'll give them a 5 to 7 days short course of systemic steroid okay so these uh, are various types of ulcer you don't have to go in detail occasionally very occasional they may be associated with fever then gland but it's very rare so just let's move to a uh, next slide now acute sore throat as a, uh, this is just to summarize patient comes with the pain for the last few days so remember in your mind when patient say ke mujhe char din se bahut gale mein dard ho raha hai to think it may be generalized inflammation it may be an ulcer it could be acute tonsillitis it could be an acute pharyngitis and there could be some abscesses we will discuss later so remember this okay we are talking about acute now let's talk about tonsillitis which is obviously very common in children and young adults uh, Uh, the, what is the commonest cause of uh, acute tonsillitis most of every acute tonsillitis does not need antibiotic treatment please uh, uh, remember this unfortunately there is so much uh, excessive abuse of antibiotic everybody wants to give antibiotic patients take antibiotics gp gives them antibiotics even ent specialists uh, seniors ent specialists give them antibiotics 
So remember, every tonsillitis does not require antibiotic. You have to assess these patients properly. So what is this? Most common in the early stages, it and they get so through, they've got runny nose, watery discharge from the nose, sneak, uh, right. It says, okay. okay. Now, there's another virus called Epstein-Barr virus, infectious mononucleosis. It is a systemic illness and it can present with acute tonsillitis, both tonsils are enlarged and there may be some uh, ulcers around it and uh, it is of, may be associated with uh, cervical lymphadenitis or splenomegaly. It is a systemic condition. Uh, it is uh, caused by the virus and you don't need to give antibiotics. I've added corona. You know, nowadays, you, everybody knows about corona. So corona, uh, CD9, COVID-19 is also one of the causes of uh, pharyngitis and tonsillitis. Now, the what are the... Uh, Initially, tonsillitis is viral in origin. Patient present with fever, sore throat, sore uh, throat, tonsil look a bit hyperemic. You will not see any inflammation, uh, any uh, any collection of pus, or a very grossly engorged tonsil. But this does generalize uh, hyperemia of the tonsil. Patient may have uh, fever, and it settles down in five to seven days. But if it is not settling down, it is getting worse or the tonsils are covered with some uh, exudate or patches or like uh, uh, pus, then it could be bacteria. So the, the commonest bacteria which cause acute tonsillitis, this is an examination question every student should know is, is the streptococcus. Which type of the streptococcus? Group A, a beta hemolytic streptococcus. It's the commonest bacteria which cause tonsillitis or pharyngitis. Okay. In acute tonsillitis, if you want, you can take a throat swab for culture, but sometimes we do not take a throat swab. We just uh, examine, take a history, examine them, and treat them. And other organisms are streptopyogens, alpha H streptococci, in which this is streptoviridens or strep pneumonia. The, the streptococcus, so it is a gram positive. So remember, gram positive, the best treatment is not third generation expensive antibiotic. A lot of doctors treat these patients with very expensive antibiotic which are third generation thinking that uh, because it is expensive, it is better. This is the thinking of doctors. Uh, I've seen that in my 28 years of experience in Pakistan, people unnecessarily give them antibiotics. So we'll talk about the treatment. You have to start them with simple antibiotics, simplest, which cover gram positive organisms. You can see, so you should know the uh, etiology of the, the bacteria which are causing it. Wherever is the infection, if it is an appendicitis, they may be gram negative. In bacteria, but in, in oral cavity or tonsillitis, usually or pharyngitis, streptococcus. Sometimes hemophilus influenza, especially in children. Occasionally, anaerobes. Sometimes we treat see patients and treat them with penicillin or macrolides like clarithromycin or erythromycin, but they're not getting better. They are getting worse. So there may be an anaerobe. So we add antibiotic which covers anaerobe. So these are the common anaerobes which can cause uh, these. Uh, now we have to proceed fast because uh, we have got very limited time. Acute tonsillitis, you all know how does it present. It, it is showing on your slides. So tonsil looks swollen, hyperemic, may be covered with pus. In the neck, they may be tender, nucleodiagnostic level two. Examination, you will see this picture, hyperemic, Red patches. This is severe acute tonsillitis along with the pharyngitis. The uvula is also swollen. Uh, again, this is another picture. Uh, this is a picture of food debris collects in the tonsil. Sometimes a patient comes and they uh, uh, take out these food debris and they think it is pus. These are called tonsillolith. These are the food debris which collects in tonsil crypts. So you don't need antibiotic. You just give them mouthwash and proper advice and they get better. It, they think it is pus, so it is not pus. So remember tonsillolith. Examination, obviously, oral cavity and neck. Management, if you you can take a throat swab, antibiotic, as I said, penicillin, like amoxicillin and clavulinic acid. Don't uh, say the word augmentin 
or clarify it in the exam. Always try to describe antibiotics generic name. Okay. If you go abroad, you will be writing your prescription in generic name, not in the brand name. Okay, so uh, we treat them with macro uh, initially penicillin if they are allergic to penicillin macrolide or first generation cephalosporin like tefradine, which comes with the name of velocef, macrolide, clarithromycin, or erythromycin, or metronidazole in selected cases to cover anaerobes. Analgesics obviously, you have to give them analgesics, you can give them local aspirin gargles or paracetamol. In severe cases, if it is not getting better, the patient cannot even drink water, then you may have to admit them an anti IV antibiotic, IV fluid, but it's very in very rare condition. Chronic tonsillitis, uh, we label that anybody who is having recurrent throat fever uh, many times a year, uh, they often miss the school and uh, uh, tonsils look uh, enlarged or maybe small. Uh, because it is chronic and uh, then may not look re red so you have to take the proper history okay the size of the uh, appearance of the tonsil is not important or size of the tonsil is not important a lot of time i see patients with a huge tonsil and you take the history they never had a sore throat so obviously you are not going to operate on them or treat it so in chronic tonsillitis the tonsil may look absolutely normal so you have to take a proper history. Sometimes children come with their uncle or with, with their grandmother. They do not know the history. The importance about the history is that because if somebody is having one or two episodes of tonsillitis, you know, don't need to do anything. But if somebody is having recurrent tonsillitis, more than four to five attacks of acute tonsillitis per year, then they, they will need tonsillectomy. So history is important in chronic tonsillitis, not the appearance. Sometimes the tonsil looks so small, they are not enlarged, but there is definite history. So frequency of tonsillitis is important. Okay. So diagnosis, as I said, size of the tonsil in recurrent is not reflective of the magnitude of the disease. So it may be small, it may be large. Careful taking history is vital. Okay, I have just told you. General health, health assessment and what are the indications of tonsillitis? To me, recurrent tonsillitis for four to five attacks in a calendar year, despite adequate medical therapy. Okay, so if somebody is having see, attack of tonsillitis, one or two attacks every year, you don't need tonsillectomy. A lot of children do get uh, tonsillitis once or twice a year. But if they're frequent, obviously they are affecting their diet, they are affecting their schooling, then you have to consider tonsillectomy. So these are the international criteria: four to five attacks in calendar year or two to three attacks per year in the last three consecutive years, okay? Another indication is sleep apnea. When tonsils are very large, they, uh, a child may stop breathing because of large tonsils and large adenoid, and they will have painful swelling. So uh, that is another indication of tonsillectomy. So history is important. But that does not mean every child or adult who has got large tonsils large tonsil you do an operation either it is uh, recurrent tonsillitis or causing or there is a history of sleep apnea or severe odynophagia painful swallowing a mother says child can't swallow and child is losing weight and tonsils are really great three great folds they are grossly enlarged or sometimes if you are suspicious biopsy uh, malignancy you do it, take a biopsy so you remove the tonsil so these are the common indication of tonsillectomy contraindications when you are planning tonsillectomy, you don't do a tonsillectomy in a patient who has got acute infection. So if somebody has got a fever in the last two to three weeks, you don't do it because, because of the inflammation, the patient may bleed. Or some patient who have got bleeding disorder or they are not fit for GA, so these are the relative contraindications for tonsillectomy. So as an intern, when a patient is admitted with an acute uh, for tonsillectomy, take the history. If they have got a fever in the last few weeks, you, you, uh, you inform your consultant and maybe you have to postpone the surgery for another two, two to four weeks. Okay, method of dissection. There are people talk about laser and various expensive equipment, but this is the cold dissection means using blunt instrument. This is the best method of tonsillectomy and minimum pain. The pain is the ma major problem after tonsillectomy. Uh, so minimum pain is with, polar, with cold dissection or bipolar dissection. Laser does not give any advantage. Coblation is another method. Harmonic is another method. 
Okay, complications of the tonsillectomy, you can cause trauma to the left teeth and oral tissue while doing tonsil or bleeding or pain or fever uh, or post operatory airway obstruction because you may have the, there may be blood collected in the throat and uh, when they uh, extubate the patient, the blood may go into the larynx and uh, aspirate that and the larynx goes into spasm, there is an airway obstruction. But these are very, very rare. The, the common complications uh, are bleeding, which is again is rare. But among the, all these complications, bleeding is uh, relatively more frequent. Okay. Now, if you remove a very large tonsil or adenoid in a, in a male boy, the parents will come and say, Remember, all boys speak like girls until they reach puberty because voice break as puberty. The parents are used to hearing their children's voice as, as a, a thick voice because of a huge tonsil or adenoid. Okay, so you have to reassure them. Tonsillectomy complication, we have talked about hemorrhage. It could be during the surgery, which is for primary, reactionary within 24 hours or secondary. So if it is during the surgery, obviously surgeon will deal with it. If it is within 24 to 48 hours, it is reactionary. It is not due to the infection. Secondary complication, which happens after 48 hours to a week, it is due to infection. So remember, in reactionary hemorrhage, you don't give uh, antibiotic. So you never give antibiotic in reactionary hemorrhage. However, in secondary hemorrhage, you treat them with antibiotic. All right. So management, intraoperative surgeon is operating, or if you are a surgeon, you are operation, operating. You, there are various ways of, of controlling the bleeding during surgery. You don't have to go in detail. Uh, the, another important uh, cause, important thing to remember is reactionary hemorrhage. You are an intern. Patient comes with tonsillectomy. After tonsillectomy, you you are on call, and, and six hours later patient start bleeding. So what to do? You are a new intern, you are a freshly qualified house officer. You remember, don't panic. If don't doctor should not panic with the blood. If it is a child or patient post transectomy is bleeding, so you do a proper assessment. Assessment means general assessment, record the pulse, blood pressure, examine the mouth. See how frequent, how severe is the hemorrhage. It may be minor hemorrhage, it may be severe hemorrhage. Counsel the family. Uh, reactionary admit, I have said written admit because a lot of time we do a tonsillectomy in daycare. Patient goes home in the evening and patient may come next morning or in the middle of the night. So you have to admit these patients if they have been discharged. If they are already in the ward, then obviously uh, you, you treat them. So after assessment, and uh, first thing you do is uh, Establish IV line because occasionally patients may go into shock. So you should have a proper IV line. And routinely they do not require blood transfusion. But if you think that BP is falling or say hemorrhage is severe, then you arrange blood. Okay. And most of the time these reactionary hemorrhage settles down with various mouthwashes. We give them hydrogen peroxide mouthwashes, which acts locally and helping controlling the bleeding. But if it is severe, we inform your senior, you inform your consultant or registrar and arrange the theater if you think that patient uh, bleeding is not settling down. All right? Okay. Then comes the secondary hemorrhage, which usually after, occur after 24 to 48 hours. And this is not surgeon's fault. This is due to infection. Uh, reactionary hemorrhage, which occurs within 24 hours, may be due to the uh, uh, surgeon's fault. Maybe the the ligature has slipped, or maybe the surgeon uh, the blood vessel was in a spasm, and uh, it was not bleeding at it, at that time, and later it started bleeding. But the secondary hemorrhage is usually after the infection. So when the patient goes home, we I usually advise parents or the patient that they should they should be limited. Uh, number of uh, timadar or get, uh, people coming to see the patients uh, uh, because uh, they, uh, the, the child or the adult can in, catch infection from the attendant, from the visitors. So no visitors should be allowed in the first week of, or so. That is why the children are not supposed to go to school or adults are not supposed to go to universities or, or work for at least a week. So this is due to infection. Usually they are managed conservatively with admission, monitoring units, and 
parenteral antibiotic. Very occasionally you have to take them to the theater. Most of the time, secondary hemorrhage, which occur after 24 to 48 hours are due to infection and settles down. So complication of translectomy apart from trauma to the local structure, the bleeding. One is interoperative, which is primary, then is reactionary, which is within the first 48 hours or 24 hours, you treat them. And in severe cases, you take them to theater. Secondary hemorrhage is due to infection. Most of the them settle down with antibiotics and proper care and IV fluid. Okay. Very occasionally, we have to take them to theater. Complication of tonsillitis. Uh, we were talking about complication of tonsillectomy, not the tonsillitis. Sometimes we are treating them, we are giving them oral antibiotic, not settling. We admit them, IV antibiotic, they are not settling. Then uh, uh, it means that there's something else is going on. Uh, so sometimes they develop pus in, around the tonsil, which is called peritonsillar abscess or quincy. And the clinical picture is, is, is usually that patient comes to you in clinic or in emergency with a history of odinophagia, uh, very painful to swallow, or even dysphagia that they, they cannot swallow. They've got a severe pain, fever, and their voice is changed. The voice is thick. In books, it describes hot potato voice. So if you put a hot potato in your mouth or hot samosa in your mouth and try to speak, then you will know how it sounds. And they will also have quincy that they will have limited opening of the mouth. Second is paraphangeal uh, abscess, which is a collection of pus in the paraphangeal space. And third is the retrophagal abscess. Most common is peritonsillar abscess. And occasionally we see these complications. Okay, so if you look at the mouth, it's usually unilateral for some reason, we don't know why. And around the tonsil is enlarged, but around the tonsil there is a bulge and it is red and inflammatory and severe pain. A tumor in the paraphangeal space or around the tonsil may appear like this. It may be painful, but it will not be red like this. So there is a bulge in this peritonsillar region. And uh, the Treatment is usually drainage. If there's pus, always drain it. So if we put the, at the most prominent point, we look at the at this uh, uh, area, and we put a needle, and pus come out, comes out. Sometimes uh, we, uh, we incise it under local anesthesia, and gush of pus comes out. And and believe me, once you remove the pus, patient pain immediately disappears. Patient is in so much agony with this, but you reassure them, put some local anesthesia surface anesthesia and drain it. So these are the symptoms I have told you about. Uh, 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 how This is how they present. Treatment is admit them, obviously IV antibody, aspirate, incision and drainage. Paraphyngeal space is collection of pus in the paraphyngeal space and now here comes the anatomy. This is the simple term, this is a, a space between your lateral wall of the oropharynx and, and mandible okay remember this this is what it is showing between the lateral wall of the oropharynx and the mandible so it is like an inverted uh, pyramid medial is the pharynx lateral is the mandible superior is the base of the skull inferior is the hyoid bone okay so this is what is paraphernalia space on the left side this is medial is the the tonsil and pharyngeal wall, lateral is the mandible and the parotid, and this is the space, which is called paraphrenal space. And inferior it is limited by the hyoid bone and posterior belly of the digestion. This is another picture, axial view. This is nose, nasopharynx, these are the mandible and medial pterygoid muscles, and this is the space. Okay. Paramental space has got major vessels and large for pineal nerves, and these are the contents of the paraphrenal space. And it is divided into pre compartment and post compartment. So these large, uh, big vessels and the large for cranial nerves are, are in the posterior part of the paraphrenal space, which is called post compartment. In pre compartment, there will be deep loop of the paraphrenal and lymph node. Okay, another picture of paraphrenal space. This is a CT scan. You can see this is a uh, maxilla, mandible, 
and this is the space, the collection of pus, and you can see the tonsil is, is bulged medially, and this is a collection of pus. This is a CT scan. So uh, why do we get it secondary, it may, may get it secondary to acute tonsillitis. It is a rare complication, but a serious complication or it could be secondary to the peritonsillar abscess or dental infection, present with fever, sore throat, odinophagia, neck node, tender cervical mass in the upper neck. This is one of my patient with this paraphangal abscess. You can see this swelling in the upper neck. Uh, and this is a CT scan of not my patient, but another uh, from the Google. This is a collection of pus in the paraphangal space, just to show you and uh, this is again not my patient, an infant with this severe tender painful swelling in the abscess, the paraphernal abscess. The treatment obviously, whenever there is a collection of pus, you have to drain it. That means surgery. So you have to admit them, and under this you treat under anesthesia. Unlike uh, quasi uh, peritonsillar abscess, you can you treat it under local but paraphernal space abscess because there are major vessels there, so you have to be careful and treat them under general anesthesia. Retrophasal abscess is collection of pus in the posterior phasal space. It is usually seen in young and children. It is very rare. I have the, uh, complication of tonsillitis, but there are other causes. Uh, so this is a uh, posterior phalanger wall, and this is a potential space behind the, between the cervical spine and the mucosa. So norm, when you do it, take a normal X-ray of soft tissue lateral view of the neck, you see this uh, retrophangal space. Its width is either equal to the uh, cervical spine or less than the spine. Okay, and if you see, so this is the anatomy. So an anterior is the fascia, posteriorly is the cervical spine covered with the fascia. Lateral is the paraphernal space and you feel it's the mediastinum. So that is why it can cause severe complication if the infection extends to the posterior mediastinum. And I have told you about uh, the important contents in retrophangal space is only lymph node. There is no major vessels, obviously, there. The causes, it could be due to upper respiratory infection. It could be due to uh, foreign body endoscopic trauma. In, in our setup, in adults, if you see an abscess, it could be tuberculosis. So again, uh, the this is a clinical picture. They're present with severe pain in the throat and drooling saliva in the, in the babies or infants, and sometimes dyspnea because of the severe swelling. Uh, Vakas, let me know when the time finishes. Uh, uh, okay. Sir, it's almost over, sir. 10, okay. So I had to discuss uh, uh, other, obviously, things, uh, but uh, since uh, we are short of time, so this is the investigation uh, for retrophagal abscess. CT scan is important on X-ray neck. I'll just show you the picture of abscess in the X-ray neck. This is the no uh, normal X-ray neck. You can see this is space which is very narrow, less than the spine. This is the next picture. This is a collection of parts and this is wider than the spine, uh, body of the vertebra. So this is just, uh, this is just to show a simple X-ray can show you the abscess. This, you can see the fluid. And this is the CT scan. I showed you this, this picture, another CT scan. Treatment admit, admit secure the airway because it can cause uh, difficulty in breathing. So they have to intubate and sometimes occasionally you have to do tricky IV antibiotic and drain it. I think I will stop here because this is the time limit and uh, we had, uh, I will uh, 